Today we have another empties video. I haven't done one of these for a while. This is where I go through any perfumes and skincare products and stuff that I have finished up in the past. I'm going to say last month, but <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this. So uh, actually this is a few months worth, I think. I know not everyone particularly likes these videos. So I'm going to try and post this as a midweek video as an extra. For the week, whatever week I end up posting it in, uh, just purely because I know that a lot of you are just here for the perfume content. So I'll try and keep it to perfumes and then anything else that I do, I'll try and do it as an extra video posting throughout the week. So let's start with the perfumes that I finished since the last time I did this. So the first one that I have here is a decant that I don't even know how I ended up with this. I think somebody must have just thrown it in with something else that they sent me at some stage. But this is Dior Cologne Blanche and I feel like I just want to say Blanche. Can I just say Blanche? And I didn't know anything about this fragrance when I first got this decant and, and I have to say it's probably not my style of perfume. Uh, it's a very almond vanilla tonka bean fragrance. And it's got some other things in there too, but in a way, I guess it might be in the similar ballpark of Tonka Imperial by Guerlain, but I prefer Tonka Imperial. And that one has more, I would say, has more vanilla, woody Tonka nuances, whereas this one, I think, has a bit more citrus in it. It's just a different feel, like they're completely different perfumes, but I sort of get a similar vibe from this as I do Tonka Imperial, but I definitely prefer Tonka Imperial by a mile. This is widely loved. I think it's been discontinued actually. I do remember looking it up and it did, it did seem to be quite widely loved and I can, I can understand why. These almond type fragrances are very popular. They're just not really my thing. Uh, I don't mind them, but I just don't love them. This is pretty much powdery from start to finish for me. And I actually really enjoy spraying it on after a shower. It doesn't last very long on me. So the way I've been wearing it has been to spray it on after a shower, uh, let it sort of give me that sort of powdery, sweet feel, although it's not overly sweet. And uh, then, you know, within a little while, it's kind of died down and I can spray something else over the top. And that's kind of how I wear this. That people are probably uh, gasping, going, why would you spray something over the top of this? Because again, I know this is widely loved. I just didn't particularly love the combo with the citruses in the top. My brain just couldn't really compute this powdery, almost gourmand, almondy scent with these citruses that were in the top and the citruses are quite bright. So I didn't not like it. I just, it wasn't one that I would necessarily reach for, for the pleasure of, you know, wearing it for a long time. So putting it on after a shower was sort of the perfect way for me to wear this. And then I could get on with my day. And so it was a way of, I guess, using it up because it, it was not an unpleasant fragrance. I didn't want it to go to waste. But at the same time, it's just not something I thought, wow, I really have to have that. Next one I am sad is over, is finished uh, because I think this, I think I only have one more travel size of this and then I'm out. But this is Melody de l'Amour by Ducida Parfums. It's just a little travel size. I think it's sort of once a year Ducida do these sort of specials where you can buy these travel size sets at either a discounted price or with free shipping. I can't remember. I think they've sort of done it either way over the last few years. So when they did that last time last year, I ended up buying a few um, sample sets. So Melody de l'Amour is predominantly a white floral fragrance, but it doesn't smell like any other white floral fragrance that I've ever tried before. Um, it also does have a bit of an old school vibe to it. It's quite musky as well. I think there's a peach note in here. So it, yeah, it really has, you know, that peach and the musk and I think there's gardenia in here as well. It kind of does have that old school perfume 
vibe, which is totally right up my alley. Uh, but it just wears so beautifully. And the scent cloud you get from pretty much all of Ducita Parfum's perfumes is just so lovely. It's incredible. Um, so that is Melody de la Mour. Uh, I'm very sad that I'm almost out of this. And once I've sort of done a reconciliation of my perfume wardrobe at the end of the year after my no buy year is finished, I think uh, I may end up getting rid of some perfumes out of my collection and I might bring a bottle of this and, and one other from Du Cedar into my collection sometime next year. Anyway, so that is Melody de l'Amour. And then next up, I'm sure will come as no surprise, uh, this is Chanel Number no. 5 Eau Premier. This has been getting very low for a while now when I've, whenever I've showed it on the channel. So I'm sure a lot of people were expecting me to finish this one up. Beautiful. I mean, I finished the bottle, right? So that's saying something. And I only bought this bottle at the beginning of 2020. So it's only taken me two years to get through a 50 mil, which is pretty much unheard of for me now. The fact that I've done that is an indication that I really love this fragrance and you know obviously wear it a lot I and that's the thing this fragrance is so good for anything you know it's good in winter it's good in summer <laughs> you can wear it to the gym you can wear it out on a walk you can wear it to work it's just it's a really good all-rounder that isn't that I don't think will offend people because Yes, it is, an, it is a number five flanker and it does have the aldehydes in it, uh, but this is a more powdery, vanillic version of number five original and it doesn't have a lot of those really heady floral notes that the num original number five has. So if you don't get along with number five Eau de Parfum or even the Eau de Toilette, and if you are kind of wanting to like number five, then I encourage you to try Eau Premier because I think this is probably the most approachable of all of them. A lot of people talk about Low being, you know, very approachable as well, and it is. Both Low and Eau Premier are, you know, the more modern versions of number five. Um, but Low has more citrus in it, I think. So I find this one to be more floral, woody, and vanillic. Low is less sweet, it's more citrusy, so it is a little bit sharper and I know that a lot of people don't get along with Chanel citruses. So if you don't get along with Chanel citruses and you want to try number five, then Eau Premier might be the one for you to sample and see if you like it. Will I be buying another bottle? Uh, eventually, probably yes, but at the moment I do have a little bottle of Low that I'm working through. And also, you know, I've, I've been through a 50 ml bottle of this in two years, so I have worn it quite a lot. And I think uh, I'm happy to just play with other things for the time being, but I can totally see myself circling back to this at some point in the future. So that is it for the perfumes in this empties video. Not a huge amount, but three is still not too bad for me. <laughs> so let's move on to the rest of the stuff. So I know that I've been making it, I guess, a bit of a thing to work through samples and sachets and things for this year. And I don't know what order the videos are going up in. So I just want to call out the fact that I won't be using up samples and sachets of things anymore for a while. In fact, I may just get rid of all of them because I have restarted isotretinoin for six months. And I know a lot of you are probably going to go, why? Your skin's not that bad. Um, and it's not that bad at the moment. Um, and it's been really good for about a decade since the last time I did isotretinoin when my skin was really bad in my early 30s. However, um, I have had some stuff happening with my skin that is persistent and it's not going away. It's been happening for about four or five months now. And it's pretty easy to hide on camera because a lot of it's on my cheeks. But I did go and see the dermatologist about it and he basically said time to go back on it for a little bit because if I don't treat it, I'm 
at the risk of scarring. So as a consequence of that, my skincare routine has become very, very simplified. I'm not using any actives. I'm just using really nourishing, moisturizing, simple products. So just FYI, <laughs> Futures Empties videos probably won't contain a lot of these little skincare samples because I'm just not interested in them now because I just want to focus on the simple things that will work with the medication that I'm on. Products. Okay, so this is something that if I got more samples of it, I absolutely would still use it because I love this stuff. This is the Guerlain Orchidae Imperial. Um, I can't remember if this is the night cream or the day cream and the sticker doesn't say, oh, it just says the cream. So I guess it's day or night, but I just love the Guerlain skin products. They're so luxurious and they smell amazing. If you don't like scents in your skincare, then you probably won't like them, but I just think they're very special and they do feel amazing on my skin, but they are so expensive. I just can't afford them. Like make you want to cry. Somebody just kicked you in the gut expensive when you look at the price. So um, <laughs> I probably won't ever be buying them, but I will happily continue to buy perfumes just to stay au fait with the sales assistant so that she will give me these things because they're amazing. I'm just kidding, by the way, <laughs> about the buying perfume just to stay in the good books with the sales assistant. All right, so I have this satchel of skin it's called Oxygen Infusion Night Cream with Glacial Flower Extract. And I just remember thinking that I didn't like how this smelled. I thought the product was fine. It didn't feel too heavy and it didn't feel too light. It was moisturizing, but I just found the smell of it to be very off-putting. It was very, it just smelled stale. Not much to say about that. I mean, it's really hard. It's hard to give you a proper review or recap on things, but I did find it to be quite moisturizing. I didn't, you know, for one use, you don't know if it's made a huge difference, but certainly I didn't feel like I needed to stop using it immediately. I used up my bottle of the Aven Hydrants Intense. It's a bit hard to read because it's a clear bottle and the lights and whatnot, but this stuff is really nice. I like it and I love the smell. It's, uh, it's it got a bit of a rose water smell, I think, to it, but it's very light. So it's pretty good for summer if you get sort of oily skin in summertime. I think this would be a great moisturizer to use then. Um, actually, it's they're calling it a serum. It's a serum. So, and I did always used to use moisturizer, but it does kind of look like moisturizer because it's sort of like a, almost a, lotion really yeah it's just really light and i found that even in summertime when i was sort of my skin did feel more moist because it's more humid here in summer i i still felt like it it was nice for a little bit and then towards the end of the day i felt like i needed to replenish my skin with more moisturizer so as much as i really love this stuff i just felt like it wasn't enough but it might be really good if you have oily skin which i don't I used another of these Orchidae Imperial um, Essence vials. I've talked about these before. I love them. I love them. And I have since tried, I've bought another sort of essence thing. It's a Korean one and a lot less expensive, but I don't think these really do anything. It's just a really nice product, but I don't necessarily think my skin or anyone's skin actually needs it. It's just, it feels nice and it smells nice. So this is one that I'm not finishing <laughs> because it really irritated me. I think I've mentioned before that my preference for deodorant is the native deodorant, the stick deodorants that you can buy. Um, they are hard to get for us here in Australia though. It, 
you know that you normally have to order directly from them from the US and pay US dollars so it ends up being pretty pricey there used to be a website in Australia that you could get them from but now they're just constantly sold out and I don't even know if they're still active anymore so I haven't replenished my native deodorant supply uh, I'm not sponsored by them by any means I have bought all of the deodorants that I've purchased from them so I haven't so I decided that I wasn't going to buy more of that because I was having to buy it in from the US and particularly you know, again shipping issues and delays I just thought it's not worth it you know I'll be I still need a deodorant in the meantime so I ended up buying a Nivea sensitive protect roll-on deodorant I hated this stuff. I did not enjoy it at all. And I bought the sensitive one because I thought that would be the least sort of harsh one on my skin. But my armpits burned after using this and I, I, I persisted with it. I tried to use it all up and I got to there and I just went, time out, I can't use this anymore. My armpits were very irritated and red. I wouldn't say they were burned, but they felt like they were burning. And I don't know what it is that's in here that's doing it, but it's horrible. And I also didn't particularly like the consistency of the milk sort of lotion application. It was a bit too wet. Uh, so I ended up switching to a Kosas one, which again is very pricey, but I'm enjoying that and it's working fine for me at the moment. And it's available in Australia. So there is that. But yeah, don't. I personally don't recommend this one. It might be fine for most other people, but for some reason, my skin did not like this. And I also didn't find it to be a particularly effective antiperspirant deodorant either. I have another Guerlain sample here. This is the Abbeille Royale Creme uh, Day Cream. This one was just okay. I mean, I love Guerlain products, but this one... Uh, it was fine. I used it. I didn't love the scent of this one. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it as much as I loved the other ones. It was a day cream, so it was much lighter than the other one, which was a lot thicker and more luxurious. This one was a lot lighter. It, it sank into my skin very quickly, which is fine. And it worked beautifully and I have no complaints about how it performed. Um, but you know, that might be something to note if you are someone who tend has a tendency towards dry skin, this might not be the pick. But, you know, the person selling you the Guerlain product will probably tell you which thing you need to get, but I can't recommend buying them the price that they're sold at. Okay, I have two of these La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5 tubes. I use this stuff pretty much as a daily now. I used to only use it once or twice a week. Now I use it pretty much every day because I'm on isotretinoin and my skin's really dry and I find this to be incredibly soothing and very nourishing. Uh, it's hard to get at the moment though. I don't know what's going on. I hope it hasn't been discontinued because if it has, I will have questions, okay? But um, yeah, this is a, a beautiful product. I really, really love it. And I have been using it for a long time. We'll continue to use it. And I'm, yeah, obviously using quite a lot of it. It does last me a couple of months, a tube like this. So I have this Summer Fridays jet lag mask. I liked this. I thought it was very nourishing. In fact, I've left a little bit in there so I can sample it again because I used most of it up the other week. It's quite thick as you would expect for a mask feels very nourishing absorbs into the skin pretty well I mean it doesn't absorb fully because it is a mask so I guess it's meant to sit on your skin um, but my skin looks very hydrated and plump after using it I I liked this I don't know how much it costs but I would think about buying this it's not fragranced either and from memory, I don't think it have, has any actives in it, but please don't take my word for that because I can't read the label on it. Make sure you research that before taking my word for it. So I think it's just a very basic nourishing moisturizing mask and it, it is 
really I actually really liked this and I would buy it maybe I should check the price first and then let you know if I'm gonna buy it if you have oily skin you probably wouldn't like this because it it still kind of feels a little bit greasy on my hand even now after a couple of minutes of it having a chance to soak in so from that perspective you know just be aware if you don't like things feeling heavy on your skin you probably won't like it but as a nighttime mask particularly after you've been in a scenario where you've been really dehydrated or your skin's been exposed to lots of air conditioning or perhaps lots of heating um, or a plane then this would be a great way to sort of I think get a bit of that moisture back in I have this ASOP uh, if this is the Camellia uh, hydrating cream I used this when I was traveling and yeah I really liked it I don't know if I have much more to say about it than that I do like Aesop products and I also have another one here Lucent Facial Concentrate it's the rose petal one I loved this I loved how it smelled let's face it the main reason I love Aesop products is their aesthetic and how they smell but in terms of the products themselves and how they compare in performance to other things I can buy from the chemist such as the La Roche-Posay etc I don't know if these things stack up as far as things go that I put on my face I just find the Aesop ones to perhaps not be as hydrating as I would like them to be I also have a rose oil from them which is still I think I still have a few drops left of that so that's still up in the drawer which I really enjoyed using but for the price I think that goes for over a hundred dollars and so for the price of that little bottle of oil which did last me a long time but I just think it's an oil <laughs> I mean I can there's so many facial oils on the market that do just as well that probably cost less than half the price I'm just a bit conscious of the price tag of the Aesop stuff I, I'm not sure it's worth the money as much as I love the aesthetic and as much as I love how they smell okay so then I have this Santa Maria Novella uh, pollen cream I think in my last empties video I talked to you about the neck and face cream that I discovered by accident because I had this satchel and that satchel and one day I woke up and my skin was so dry I couldn't get it to nothing I put on it seemed to hydrate it and so I ended up buying that cream in the full size uh, recently there was very conveniently a sale on at my local perfumery and they had a sale on Santa Maria Novella skin products and so I bought that in that sale however this one was different I didn't dislike it but I, it didn't have the wow effect that I got with the nice face and neck cream and it probably just is purely down to the fact that on the day that I used this I probably didn't have any major skin concern that this was solving for me whereas on the day that I used the face and neck cream it wowed me because it was the only thing that I put on my skin that day that actually made it feel hydrated and soft so it comes down to the conditions that you're testing these things in uh, so this is probably fine but my preference is still for the face neck and decolletage cream I used up a little sample of this Chanel Sublimage Luminaire cream or Lumiere cream this is lovely as well and it also has a beautiful scent to it but you know it's Chanel so you are going to pay for it if you want it. it it is lovely though and I have no complaints about this one it is however quite a light cream um, it absorbs beautifully feels really hydrating but again I think just my circumstances at the moment I probably need something with a bit more body to it and a bit more staying power in terms of hydration I'm sure Chanel has something in their line that would fit that description but I just probably don't need to pay the price for it right now I have used up two more of these La Roche-Posay and Thelios 50 plus sunscreens I am making my way through some tubes of other sunscreens that you guys recommended to me and they all are good for different reasons but I still always go back to this as my go-to daytime under makeup SPF the reason being that a lot of the other sunscreens I've tried do pill uh, with the makeup products that I use and a lot of the time I'm just using a tinted moisturizer over the top um, I still have to be careful about the, the 
choice of sunscreen that I use and this is it. That's what I like to wear every day for just normal daytime activities. If I'm doing something a bit heavier like sport or going for a hike or something then I obviously don't wear this. I wear something that's got a little bit more staying power um, but this is fantastic stuff. I love it. I got through another of this as clear soothing gel serum. I've talked about this before. I have really started to appreciate this one. I think the last time I talked about this I said I liked the product but I didn't like the smell because it's unfragranced. It doesn't have a chemical smell or anything like that. It just it smells like KY jelly and I just don't like the sensation of feeling like I'm smearing KY jelly all over my face. Yeah, that's not how it feels texture wise but that's just what it smells like. <laughs> but I've kind of been using this because it is a very basic soothing hydrating serum that's very inexpensive and it works it does the job just as well if not better than you know some of these other expensive sample ones that I've been trying like the Guerlain one the in S the in the essence in lotion I mean this stuff does the same job that I use that for basically and whilst this has the horrible smell and that smells beautiful this probably does a better job of actually hydrating my skin so so as I said I have been using this and I did purchase another one because it it does the job and it's not expensive and at the end of the day I'm putting it on my skin for a few seconds I smell it and then I put a moisturizer on anyway so it's not a problem. I did try this La Roche-Posay Tellurian serum thing and it's just Basically, it's just a very basic hydrating serum. I hate the dropper, <laughs> hate it. This stuff was quite expensive. I think it was about $60. And it was nice to use. I mean, the dropper is an issue because I think I end up using more when, I, when it's a dropper than I would if it was a pump. I just feel like it's not a great dispensing system. Also for the price, again, I feel like the as clear does the job you know this was a bit thicker um, it was just a very clear viscous uh, liquid basically but it was very viscous almost like a gel but not quite a gel and it was nice I'm not gonna lie I, I liked using it but I just feel like this didn't even I think this lasted me a month whereas the as clear uh, soothing gel I think is less than 20 bucks and it it might, it might even be like $14 or something and that tube lasts me probably th two or three months. I, it's just I don't feel like I'm getting value for money with this even though it's a very nice product. Okay this is a sample of the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Pink Juice Moisturizer. I did not like this to start with and I would say that I still don't love it and I have no intention of purchasing it just really hated the smell for a start. This fake watermelon smell. Ugh, it's gross. Um, but also it was again very light wearing. It's more like a serum. I, I treated this like a serum. I put this on and then I'd put a moisturizer on over the top and then I'd put a sunscreen on over the top of that. It's fine. I don't know how much these things go for. I, these things get talked about. There is another one, I think it's an avocado mask or something that gets talked about a lot from this line on YouTube and in the beauty community. Uh, I haven't tried it, don't know, but this is not a product that I would recommend or rate for anything. I mean, it's just, it's fine, but it stinks and it, isn't hydrating enough for me but if you've got really oily skin maybe you would like it it is kind of refreshing I suppose I guess that's the intent for the watermelon fragrance but I hate the fragrance and it's very strong okay we have two things left and I love them both okay so this is the Clarins SOS primer it's in the icy range which just means it has something in it that feels really cooling on the skin which I really appreciate, particularly in summertime, because in summertime, sometimes I don't even wear the tinted moisturizer. Sometimes I just wear this and it is green, but it isn't a full on 
green. I can I, I can put a pump on this of this on my face and smear it on my face and it does help a little bit to cancel out redness but I just find it puts this really lovely even tone to my skin when I put this on and I haven't repurchased this because I'm trying to see if I really need it as much as I thought I did uh, and I have to say I am missing it because I do feel like it does even out my skin tone a little bit before I go in with the tinted moisturizer and I'm finding at the moment without it that I'm putting the tinted moisturizer on but I'm kind of feeling like it's not I feel like it doesn't have as much coverage but it's not a coverage issue it's a color correcting issue and this actually works pretty well for me it is very subtle if you've got if you've got really really red skin it's not going to cancel it all out but it does just even it a little bit more I find so I'm I probably will purchase this again and then finally I have this IGK first class dry shampoo and I have to say this tin lasted me a long time I think I bought this when we were still in the other house so that's over a year ago and I really like it uh, but it is it is expensive I think I can't remember how much it was but I do remember thinking gosh that's a lot for dry shampoo so I didn't replace this when I got to the end of this what I did was I just bought a little travel size of the Batiste is that how you is that the name of it that you just get from the supermarket and that's been fine and it's actually been really convenient because I've been traveling so much I can take it um, and it's not too big and bulky like this is quite big I wouldn't travel with this anyway I have no complaints about this I love this stuff but I know it is expensive and you probably don't need to spend the money for this I hope you enjoyed that um, as I said I always enjoy watching empties videos because I'm a nosy person I like seeing what people are using up and I'm happy to share them with you as long as you are happy for me to share them with you if you're not interested or if you think they're crap then by all means let me know and I will stop doing them otherwise if you did like it do give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one bye <laughs>